Hello everyone, you are on the Den Electro channel, and as always, I am Dennis. Today we will make a fan thermostat. The thermostat is built on a factory circuit that is used in an ATX computer power supply. With its help, the fan speed was regulated in the power supply. The circuit is very simple. It works from 12 volts and consists of only 9 parts. In the power supply, the temperature sensor of the temperature controller was bent like this and inserted into the group stabilization choke. To transfer heat to the temperature sensor, it was glued with hot glue. The thermostat circuit looks like this. Current from the power supply with a voltage of 12 volts is supplied here. The output is here. The fan is connected here. Depending on the temperature, the output voltage changes from 5 to 12 volts. The current goes to the fan through transistor Q1. We can say that this is the power part of the circuit. When the ambient temperature is low, the transistor is half closed and only 5 volts are supplied to the fan. The fan rotates at low speed. As the temperature rises, the voltage on the fan increases and the fan speeds up. The 10 kilo ohm thermistor R6 is located in the circuit here. This is a thermistor with a negative temperature coefficient. That is, when heated, its resistance decreases. When cold, its resistance is high, and therefore transistor Q2 is completely closed. When the ambient temperature begins to increase, the resistance of resistor R6 will begin to decrease, and then the negative potential at the base of transistor Q2 will begin to increase. And the more the transistor opens, the more transistor Q1 will open through it, since the base of Q1 will begin to pull up to the plus through the emitter collector junction of transistor Q2. When the temperature sensor cools down, it will close transistor Q2, which in turn will close the base of transistor Q1 to the plus. As a result, transistor Q1 will partially close and will be in the same state as it was at the beginning. If you do not have such transistors then when replacing them, you should pay close attention to the gain. Since in this circuit, it is of great importance. For transistor Q1, it was 213. And for Q2, 250. If the gain of the transistors is much lower, then the transistors will not open completely, and the fan will not spin at maximum speed. Now let's see how it works. The circuit will be powered by this converter. I will supply 12 volts from it. This large cooler is connected to the output of the circuit. In fact, it was in this power supply. A multimeter is connected in parallel to this cooler. It will show what voltage is currently going to this fan. I apply voltage. The fan starts spinning, but the voltage on it does not rise immediately, but slowly increases. From 4 volts, it gradually increases to about 5. Then I will speed it up 5 times. Even if you touch the thermostat with your hand, the voltage on the fan does not rise much. We can say that the circuit does not react to body temperature at all. For the fan to spin faster, a higher temperature is needed. Now I will heat the temperature sensor with a soldering iron, of course. I will heat it not with a part where the tin melts, but with a part that is closer to the handle. Well, the temperature there is also not small. 
Of course, it burns your fingers too. The thermostat starts to work only at a high temperature of about 50 to 60 degrees. But the voltage on the fan is not yet full 12 volts, but only 11.2. The voltage remains the same and does not increase further. Even if I close the temperature sensor so that it does not cool down from the air coming from the fan, nothing changes. Although the temperature sensor is already very hot, there is no point in heating it further. It is safe to say that for this circuit with such a fan, this is the maximum output voltage. When I remove the soldering iron, the temperature of the temperature sensor will begin to drop, and the voltage on the cooler will also decrease. The voltage on the fan also drops to about 5 volts. But this is natural, provided that it is already cold in the power supply case. If you take a cooler with a lower power, then at the very beginning the voltage on it will not be 5 but about 5.5 volts. And when the temperature sensor heats up, the voltage on it will already be higher. A full 12 volts. Apparently this is due to the fact that the current gain in the circuit is not enough. It can spin up a small fan completely, but not a large one. Although this does not mean that a large fan is worse. After all, it consumes almost twice as much current. And at a voltage of 11 volts, it produces twice as much power. By the way, during operation, transistor Q1 heats up quite a bit. This is the transistor through which the current goes to the fan. After all, when the transistor is half closed and only 5 volts go to the fan, the extra 7 volts settle on the transistor. It turns out that with a current of 128 milliamps, it dissipates almost 900 milliwatts in the form of heat on its case. This is almost the maximum of its capabilities, since according to the datasheet it is designed for only 1 watt. A similar circuit can also be assembled on Soviet parts. I took KT817V as transistor Q1 and KT61G for Q2. Thermistor marked MMT4B is 6.2 kilo ohms. KT817 is perfect for both current and power, but its gain is only about 50, and this will affect the operation of the circuit. Let's see how it works. After starting, the voltage on the cooler also reaches about 5 volts. If you take the temperature sensor with your hand, its heating also does not particularly affect it. If you heat the temperature sensor with a soldering iron, the voltage increases, but less. Not up to 11 volts, but only up to 10. This is all because of the low gain of the KT817. But on a small fan, the voltage will be higher. That's all for today. Like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet, Ask questions in the comments if someone doesn't understand something and buy everyone. And don't forget to go to the description, because there may be more videos about thermostats there.